to the video walkthrough tour of Brink's Omega, a cruiser I have hired from Barnes Brinkcraft based in Roxham. Now this cruiser I would say is more suited for a couple, uh, maybe a couple with a young child because really it's suited for two people, although it will sleep up to four, but you'll see what I mean. That The dinette can be made up to an extra berth, but it's not really a double berth as such. So I would say best for a couple, an agile couple of that, it can be a little bit hard to get back on or off of the boat if you're mooring against a low key heading um, and I apologise for the wind on the microphone. So you join me here at Womack Island on a beautiful March day so it just goes to show you don't need to come in the high season to get good weather and sunshine sometimes if you're able to get some time off work and the weather's looking good the Norfolk Broads makes for an ideal destination whatever the weather. So we're going to start at the, the back of the boat, the stern, and we're going to work to the front of the boat which is the bow. This is a sedan style cruiser, it's got patio doors and this lovely outside space. So without further ado, let's get going. So you join me here in the outside area on this boat and it's a very lovely area indeed. I want to draw your attention first of all to the fact this boat has 240 volt shore supply. This cable here will attach to the various electric posts that you see dotted around the rivers and uh, a location of these posts can be found on the Broads Authority website together with a PDF downloadable leaflet that shows how they're to be used. But effectively you buy a one pound top up card, these are available from Broads Information Office is Barnes Brinkcraft themselves, post offices such as Horning Post Office does them, various places. You can buy, say, five of them if you wish. Each card has one pound value. It's like a, a magnetic strip that you put into the electric post. And I believe that currently it's about 15p per kilowatt hour. So if you're using something that's, you know, going to be a thousand watts, you'll get an hour's use for 15p. The cable's not super long, but it's not that short, so um, you don't have to more bang opposite the post. Um, but it does mean that with your card you can then not worry about battery use, or indeed worry about how much stuff you're using. So maybe if you bring some high-powered hairdryer or tongs, maybe it's uh, a case of you know wanting to bring games, consoles or whatever, and you don't want to use the batteries and you just want to be off the boat's grid, as it were, and on the national grid, this is a great way of doing it. So as I say, this is the outside seating area, and it is quite spacious as you can see. During the trip that I've done, we've had four people here, and uh, everybody managed to sit down, and we brought the table out here and had breakfast in the sunshine. It was really lovely. When you more stern on in this boat, you've got the trap door here. Apologise for the wind on the microphones, not all I can do about it, folks. And there is the bathing platform here. This is a good safety feature, not only when you're mooring stern on to step off the boat, but if the unfortunate should happen and someone finds themselves in the water, of course it is far easier to get them back on board from here, but do not have the engine in gear when that happens, because the propeller is of course there. It also means that if you are a couple, you bring in a small child, you can lock that and they're not going to fall off the back of the boat. Or indeed, if hubby's had a few too many beers, it will keep him inside as well. But as you can see, it really is very lovely. You've got these patio doors that slide back. Everything's all this tinted glass, which is nice. You've even got an outside light. So in a summer evening, you can sit out here with a nice cool bottle of white wine and watch the sun go down and the party doesn't need to stop when it gets dark because you've got that light. Very clean, very nice area this. 
also if the weather is inclement you could just pop out here and you've got this nice little overhang that's going to keep the worst of the weather off. So next up the saloon. So as you come into the saloon from the outside space here you come through this very wide opening nice patio door which by the way closes and opens on its runners very easily as you can see and the saloon is very light and airy and spacious but let's first of all discuss storage because there's plenty on this boat. You've got these really nice cupboards here. Uh, they go back a fair way and they're quite high inside you can get quite a lot in there bags of stuff and so on and if you're cramming stuff in here it's worth pointing out that they're lined with this really nice soft suede material so anything that hits the back it's not going to get all scratched up they're very dry they don't smell musty so anything you put in there is not going to come out smelling any different than when you put it in there you've also got these drawers over here um, again they go back a fair way you can fit quite a lot of stuff in there and the trusty JVC stereo radio CD player. This one doesn't have the auxiliary input though. Um, it does actually have the lead, uh, which is hidden up here. And I thought, oh brilliant, I can plug in my iPhone and get my music through the stereo. But unfortunately, um, that won't work because of the fact that there isn't an actual option on this stereo for auxiliary input. So just radio and CDs, I'm afraid, guys. The TV is a basic affair on the face of it, but actually is quite feature rich. You've got a DVD player, which will also play your CDs. There's also a USB input, which means that if you've got movies on a USB stick and they're in the right format, you can watch those on here too. So you've got your entertainment options well covered. Now, moving over here, you've got the table the folding table but notice this one here is actually fiberglass and it's very uh, easy to keep clean and um, unlike most boats which are wooden it's quite light um, and it has rubber feet so it won't scratch this floor and as we did we also took it outside in the sunshine it's, it's very easy to, to move around and you can comfortably you know fit four people around it there's uh, another cupboard down here which has got your cleaning supplies, your bucket, you know, your dustpan and brush. But this one here is a nice um, addition. Uh, again, it's very deep, it goes back, and again, it's all lined with that same nice suede material. So it's really nice options for storage on this boat. Also, here you'll find this central heating control for the warm air heating. This is a Webestro unit, a 3 kilowatt unit. It has two heating outlets, one in the saloon and one in the front cabin. Just uh, for reference, all the way over here is your full power option and it will sit there happily chugging away uh, with an awful lot of heat and a lot of hot air coming out of those vents. However, about 11 o'clock you're on your low setting and that will use half the fuel but still maintain a nice temperature. So it's nice to have these and I wish all boats had whoever's the manufacturer, whether it's Robestro, Makuni, or a, a spasher, a system where you can vary the temperature because sometimes you need the heating on but you don't need it on full whack, it gets too hot. So uh, again, I usually had this you know, on low setting, kept me perfectly warm, but it's been really lovely weather this March. Coming over here is the main saloon seating area, which as you can see is nice thick foam, it's soft, it's covered in this nice soft drain on material. It's been really well upholstered. And again, you've got space under here. You've got some drawers. Now, these don't go back as far, but they're ideal for putting things in. You know, maybe a pair of deck shoes and can go in there or, you know, a bag of stuff. You can just bung them in there out of the way. Now, you see these here? These are feet, people. And this is because this whole thing pulls out and becomes a double bed. Now, it's not really a double bed because of the curve of this. It's more like a single and a half. This is why I was saying you know, it's ideal for a couple with a young child because they will be perfectly comfortable on here. But if you had two adults, who's going to have the sort of the bad luck and misfortune of having the, the half pillow bit where it curves round? Or I suppose you could do it so your heads are down this way, but again, your feet can't stretch out this way. So it's not really a double berth. Um, in the true sense of the word. But how does it work? Well, you pull this out and it comes to about there. You then pull open this here and behind here are two more seat squabs that fill the space here. So when it's all set up, that and this all are as one. Now, through the magic of editing, let's see how that works.
Are we ready, boys and girls? Ladies and gentlemen, abracadabra! And da-da! It's here, yes. This is how it looks when you make it up as a, as a berth, as you can see. These pieces here, you thought, you thought, you thought that you would use that, wouldn't you? But no, they've, they've thought of everything. They've got these nice soft squabs that go in. And uh, it makes up a really nice uh, space. But as I say, to have it as a full double, it is on the narrow side. So if you're a cosy loving couple, it's fine. But I would say this is more suited, as I say, for a child's birth. So that's how it looks like that. Even when it is all fully made up, there is still a lot of space to move around. And of course, if there was to be three or four of you in here, um, whoever gets this, they then can also use this as their, you know, their storage space for their personal effects. Um, so it becomes their own cabin, if you like. So very nice it is too. So let's move on next and have a look at the general um, features of the saloon, such as the lighting, the speakers and the helm. Now I did say earlier how spacious and light and airy this saloon feels. And a lot of that is because of the sheer amount of light that gets in through all of the different windows. Now they are tinted windows, but that really doesn't stop you seeing out as much. You wouldn't really know inside that they're tinted. They certainly don't distort the colours in any way. But what they do do is keep a lot of the glare down. Sometimes a low sun on the water and the reflections of the water moving, it really can get quite hard on the eyes and you have to wear sunglasses even though it's sort of February or March or something. But this does help negate that. And also you've got a sunshine roof which I'll show you just in a second. So here is the sunshine roof. It's not a sliding roof, but both sections open, they're hinged, and you've got the different adjusters here, so you can have it open a little bit or open all the way. And it also means, of course, that there is a lot of light that is allowed flooding in the boat, and in the summer times, you can have the patio door open, you can have these open, these windows slide open as well, so there's a lot of air that gets into the boat. Now, here is the helm, and this is my only complaint on this boat this helm's chair. It's very comfortable to sit at, unfortunately um, it doesn't move so you know if you've got short arms you're going to be maybe too far back from the steering wheel but my main issue is its height or it's not so much its height or the adjustability of it because it's got that looked after as well you can have it low or high but the problem is to have it up high enough in order to have a commanding view out of here and see the full width of the boat means that your feet then no longer touch the bar that's been provided as a footrest. And if you of course have the seat low enough so your feet touch the footrest, well then you can't really see out of the windows comfortably to where you're going. So I think what would be ideal would be to do away with the fixed helm seat altogether and just have this type of seat on a frame where you had the footrest as part of the frame, maybe sort of the footrest about there. So you could just comfortably sit on your, your seat and, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be too height adjustable, of course, just high enough for the average Joe to be able to see out and rest his feet. Because after a long journey, with your feet left dangling, it does rather make for the backache and the thighs to ache. However, you do get this absolutely gorgeous steering wheel. Um, it's actually, I'm not sure if it's real wood, it might be epoxied wood or it may just be wood effect, but it's lovely and smooth and the steering, you can do it just so easily just with, you know, almost one finger even. That's how smooth the steering is. You've also got um, all of your kind of electronics here, you can switch on and off from your water pump to your fridge, but you know, you don't really have to worry about that. Maybe your domestic water at night, um, just to stop the pump going off. You've got your engine controls here that will warn you of your charge state, your uh, glow plugs and your two warning lights for low oil pressure and high water temperature. Uh, you've got a gauge for your water temperature. This didn't get above 45 so I'm wondering if um, it's just a cool running engine or maybe the thermostat was stuck open on the engine because usually you expect it about 75, maybe 80. Um, you've got 24 volt gauge here which is interesting, often seen on a boat. That's your domestic 12 volt gauge and that's your engine volt gauge for your starter battery. And there's your rev counter. All very nicely done in this uh, wood effect finish. And um, also you've got here two useful things. One, a toilet tank light to tell you when your pump out is due. And secondly, an accessory lighter socket for plugging in, you know, mobile phone charger. And if you have one of these, 
which I do for uh, holding the phone then that makes life really easy and you can have your phone there easy to reach and not gonna sort of distract you when you're going along. You've also got an electric windscreen wiper uh, which is very nice to have on a boat and as you can see down there is the galley which is our next port of call and um, all of this though is really lovely place to hang out after a long day or just you know in the evening you know chilling out watching TV it's all lined with this lovely holly antique effect flooring uh, very well insulated engine it's a shaft driven boat it's not hydraulic so you're not going to have to worry about any of the whining hydraulic motor noise and um, I just think it's really very nice. You've got a warm air heating outlet there that swivels around so you can direct the, the air flows and where you want it to go. So that's the saloon. Next, the galley. So you join me here in the galley on this boat and as you can see it's very spacious and light and airy. Um, it's part of the saloon, there's no dividing door or bulkhead. So if someone's down here cooking, they can still talk to someone who's up in the saloon, maybe watching TV. Or if you're just popping down here for a cool drink out the fridge, again, there's no door to open, corridor to walk down or anything else. It's a couple of steps from the saloon and you're in the U-shaped galley. So let's have a look at this quite comprehensive and very well laid out galley. So first of all, I think it's fair I draw your attention to the fact that a lot of Barnes Brinkcraft boats have done away with gas as their form of cooking on board and have turned to full electric systems, which of course from an operational point of view means that they have to worry less about the gas safety element of things, the buying of the gas, the storing of the gas, and of course just, you know, potential dangerous situations that naked flames on board boats can do, not to mention the risk of CO2 poisoning. So they have got microwave combi ovens, which are microwaves and ovens in one, um, and ceramic hobs, electric ceramic hobs. Now usually they're either one or two burners, a couple have got uh, more, but um, this is one of the few boats that still has the gas system, and I must say I prefer it. If you're sensible, and we all know that common sense isn't you know, most prevalent in today's world, but some people still possess it. Uh, don't use the oven as a space heater. When you're cooking, open the window and don't keep things like tea towels near naked flames. You should survive. The reason why I prefer it though is I believe that having a four burner gas hob you can do more, you can prepare more on on board um, if you wish to and of course you've got the proper oven which is simply you know put in gas mark five for half an hour and you know it's going to be done. Um, it's also good for things just like warming up plates or crisping up some bread. Um, it's easier to bung it in the oven. Now this oven here is uh, electric piezo start so no worry about bending down with uh, you know matches or a, or a lighter. Um, it's very modern, new and clean. It also has the grill inside so you just move the shelf up higher to use the grill. These are no longer made, sadly, uh, this particular type of hob, but they really were well made when they were being produced. I mean, you think how old this is, how long it's been here, how much use and cleaning every week over and over of many hirers, and it's still got its enamel paintwork, and, um, you know, it really works well. So, uh, you know, big up to the company that made these, and it's a shame that the modern varieties that are all stainless steel they're not holding up quite as well because the stain is still cause scratches and, and it shows wear quicker I think than these. On to though the tour of the galley you get a nice large stainless steel kettle. There's lots of little storage places you can see here this is where they keep the glasses. I moved these along and you know kept other provisions in here as well. Nice to have actual stemmed wine glasses not just tumblers. Uh, it does make a difference if you're having a glass of wine to have in a wine glass rather than a tumbler. You've got a nice sink. Um, I'm not sure what the point of this is. Leave aside boats. Um, what is the point of having this little thing here? I, I can't figure it out. I mean, my aunt used to have a waste extractor, I believe, um, that went down there. You put like your carrot peelings in like this, and but this doesn't. So I'm not really quite clear of that. But hey ho, it's got it. You've got your filtered water point here, which is really nice because it turns on rather than having to hold the little lever. But it's a very nice little unit there. Draining board here and plenty of worktop space here. That is the only double outlet for 240 volts on this boat. So 
if you're going to be hiring this boat do be aware of that fact that say if you're even if you're hooked up to shore power for example and you know your partner wants to use her hairdryer she's going to have to come here and plug it in and because then here out in the galley there's no mirror to see what she's doing with her hair so it might be well worth thinking if you're bringing um, stuff with you that is to 40 volts uh, maybe bring an extension lead so you can just plug that thing in take it into the galley uh, sorry <laughs> from the galley to the forward cabin where there is a mirror and uh, be able to do that some boats have sockets in the saloon the galley and the forward cabin this particular boat it just has it here you get uh, your tea towels a fire blanket your utensils here Again, down here is where they keep the, the plates, the crockery and so on and so forth. And as you can see, it is a compact but very usable space. It's, it's in a U. And again, you've got light flooding in down here. So it really is a lovely place. And look at that, people. It's a full-size domestic fridge. So you can have full-size domestic fridges on boats, but it's not even like one of these special 12-volt full-size domestic fridges. It's a proper domestic fridge with a proper three-star ice compartment in it, and it runs off of the 24-volt system. Now, I'm not going to get into Ohm's sort of law and, you know, amps and all the rest of it, but suffice it to say, if you have more volts, you use less amps, which is why we use less amps in the UK at 240 volts to our cousins in America at 110. And so it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have anything last longer, but um, basically you can have more batteries wired together to get you up to 24 volts and that will then go to a 24 volt inverter and be able to power 240 volt appliances and in doing so use less amps than if you were doing it through a 12 volt system so interesting idea there maybe it's an experiment they decided to try on this particular boat I've had no trouble with the battery on this boat as far as this is concerned it's been coming on and off and on and off engine running or not there isn't a problem so whatever the system is it works on this boat next up is the heads which is through this door here so here are the heads and as you can see they're very nice and spacious too you get the trusty pump action toilet on this boat here you've also got space down here dry space to keep stuff your toiletries and so on a very nice large sink and as you can see it's a place you can put stuff over here there's also a mirror, I'm not included, but uh, it's a nice mirror, a place to put your towels. And again here, you can slide this, you can put all your stuff in here, and then you know it's not going to get splashed by anything. So it's a really nice space, and again you've got these very nice bright lights. No curtain, because it's frosted glass, so no one can see inside. You've also got a 240 volt shaver socket. And for astute viewers, you may have said, well hold on a minute Robin. What's behind this there? This curtain here, does that wrap round? Because you've got the shower tray here. Where, where's... It hasn't. Oh yes, it has, people. It has got a separate shower cubicle. And a very nice one it is too. Look at this. So you can have a shower in here. It is full height. You've got your controls here. Again, another ring here for your, your towel to put on. And you can close that off. Have your shower in here and not have any of the water going and getting in the toilet tray and all of the rest of it like this so that is really nice we've even got here again you could put your shower gels and stuff in here and close it out of the way there's a vent here that takes the steam outside and that is your shower pump you just press that and it'll empty the shower tray so how nice is that? I mean, that really is quite a large space. I mean, you could even sort of sit down on here. Um, you know, you don't necessarily have to stand up to shower in this place. So that really is lovely. And again, I don't know if you saw, you've got the separate light there as well. So at night time, you know, you're not showering by sort of uh, dim light. So this is one of the best heads. And this is only a 31 foot boat by 11 foot six. But that is a really nice space to get ready in the morning and what good design that is next up and lastly the forward cabin so the forward cabin as you can see is accessed through this door next to the galley and uh, one thing about this boat is everywhere you go is full of light and space and you know look at this space here that for example your drawers you can use here and here uh, another hot air heating outlet there but it really is it's all full height headroom in here and uh, it's just full of 
space and I love that about this boat that it's it's compact it's good for a couple but while you're in it and moving around in it you're not stooping or having to bend over all the time and everything else so here we are in the forward cabin as you can see two V berths standard affair on many boats they're quite wide though the distance from here to here so you're not feeling too sort of claustrophobic and, and sort of kept in and even with two people here they're wide enough at the the foot of the beds so your feet don't sort of clash each other in here is a full height wardrobe for putting your things that's the only full height storage space on this boat it has to be said now again you've got lots of other storage though you've got your drawers here you've even got this nice little cubby here as you can see to put things away in and yes, this is where you see you have the headboard of a double bed here. So how do we make this into a double bed? If you know you want to be together with your special someone, it's got it covered on this boat. So again, we call upon the magic of the Norfolk Broads and Agra Kadabra. And as if by magic, it's here. Yes, they give you an insert uh, to put in between the two Birds, basically now because this does mean that you're suddenly restricted for space in here you can't easily get under to the drawers there so it's uh, it's it's a compromise it's not a proper double um, and it uh, it's a snug double but um, it works and uh, you know when I was here with my girlfriend and I put this in you know it was perfectly comfortable again it's very nice soft foam you're not going to be having back aches from sleeping on this boat um, and what we did was when we when we got up in the morning we would then take this away and uh, convert it back into you know the two singles uh, and then we'd have enough space we'd get under the drawers and so on and so forth but that's how it works and uh, it's a uh, quite um, lightweight the, the insert and uh, to be honest with you when we weren't using it here what we did with it was we put it into the shower compartment obviously after it had been dried out because you don't want to get this wet but that is the forward berth as you can see the forward cabin a lot of windows this opens here that opens there and you've also got this really nice um, hatch here that just opens like this now it hasn't got a, a hinge so it won't stay open but we did that and that let a load of, of air come through and again you're given a blackout blind that you can put on the outside of this and uh, keep everything uh, nice and dark at night now I did use that because that helps insulate a little bit the outside elements so on a cold night it cuts down on the amount of condensation that builds up here and then might otherwise drip down here so that is the forward cabin so without further ado let's have a little look at the outside of the boat and that concludes this tour of this very nice Brinks Omega now I'll be displaying the prices, the standard hire prices for 2014 after this video. So if you're interested in hiring this boat, as I say, I think it suits a couple that like a bit of space, a bit of luxury, um, or a small family. I would say that if you're four people coming or two couples, it might be a little bit claustrophobic um, and perhaps won't be sort of what you're ideally looking for and you might want a larger boat. But um, it will go under Ludden Bridge at suitable states of tide. It won't go under Roxham or Potterheim bridges. It is very manoeuvrable boat. Um, it's quite powerful. It has a 2.2 litre engine. So fuel use may be a little bit higher than on smaller engined craft. But it's, uh, it just chugs away at about you know 1100 RPMs, 4 miles an hour. So you really are using very few revs to, to keep it going. I haven't had any problems on this boat apart from a sluggish uh, starter battery that was uh, very rapidly replaced by Barnes Brinkcraft and their service um, I think in the times that I've been going with them has moved on and on and on. Uh, customer service, helpful booking staff, welcome at the yard, quality fit out of the boats you know in they're, they're, they're adding things you know in the pictures on their website this hasn't got the holly teak flooring now it's got the holly teak flooring so each year a little addition is made to the fleet they're still building new boats and i think they should be considered as one of the better more luxurious companies on the brawls when you want to treat yourself uh, perhaps uh, if your budget allows they are a bit more pricey than some of the more budget price boats but you pays your money that's what you get. So let's have a look at the outside of this boat and uh, 
that concludes the video tour so I hope it was interesting for you and it might have helped you you know if you're hiring this boat or you're thinking about hiring this boat you get the rundown of what you get inside so here is the bathing platform I was talking about along with the little door uh, which is ideal for you know stern mooring very low down you could um, you know board the boat by stepping from the bank onto this but there isn't a grab rail here to hold on to so it might be better to to make the uh, effort of getting on here it is as I said quite a high um, freeboard if you just see the the difference between the height there and the key here so you have to be an agile person to get on and off of this boat this is the TV aerial it pulls out of its holder do remember to take that off if you're going to go under Ludden Bridge or you won't get reception in the evening later if you don't. The side decks are very wide as you can see. This is this tinted glass I was talking about. It's very dark from the outside of the boat but as you saw earlier it doesn't affect the inside view out. Handy to have a centre cleat. You've got nice safe grab rails all the way around the front. Also nice to see you've got two cleats for your port and starboard side along with your mudway. Manual mudway, not an electric one. So uh, good old fashioned, put it in the water and yank it out yourself. But as you can see though, it's sporting the new Blake's logo. And it's quite an imposing boat, kind of sporty looking boat. You can see influences of other boats here. It's, it was moulded by aquafiber. Um, so you've got this window here for any boat nerdy people like me. Reminds me of a certain um, aquafiber Pearl 38, the, the center cockpit sliding canopy boats. And these three windows here remind me of anything from low liners to the um, likes the San Julian which I believe is a Aquafiber Sapphire 32 but I could be wrong there but um, you can see where elements of other boats have come together to make this sedan cruiser and it is a sedan cruiser by that we mean we've got the outside seating at the back and the slight overhang here very smart kind of sporty um, lovely boat so that is the outside of the boat and this is a fabulous morning to come to should you be on the broads and want somewhere quiet it's off the main dike very few boats come round here so thanks for watching the video tour I hope it was good hope you enjoyed it they're getting better as each time goes on I'm listening to your comments about things and um, it's been a very pleasant boat to, to spend a week on.